friend, welcome to Living the Blessing. It's my pleasure to be with you today and we are going to be talking about an important and interesting topic, understanding God's blessings. We are going to take time to define what the blessing is, what blessings are, and look, about, look at how blessings work. Before we dive into the topic, I would like you to share this episode of the of living the blessing because it's an important one it's going to be very very interesting if you have not subscribed to this channel please do so that will help you to receive our posts whenever we release a new post we release two posts every week currently i intend to run a series i call the christmas story during the Christmas season. If you subscribe, you'll be sure to get it without any delay. So do subscribe and leave any comment you may want to leave on the comment section. Now, let's take our golden text for the day before we delve into the topic. I want to take a text from Genesis chapter 1 verse 28 and I read, And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the earth, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. May God bless the reading of his word. Right after God created man on the earth, the first thing God said was to bless man and that is the blessing that's the beginning of the blessing of humanity that is what we just read now let's begin to talk about the blessing what actually are blessings in my own words i define blessings as legislations blessings are like legislations they are like a rule, a, an edict pronounced by a ruling authority. That is what blessings are. I would say that if I will put it in a more specific way, blessings are spiritual legislation. Spiritual legislation. It's important we understand that uh, the blessing is not just something physical, but it's a spiritual legislation. Yes. So first of all, we understand that the blessing is like a rule that must be followed. It's, it's an authority deciding how things are going to go. That's number one. Then the number two point we must take from this definition is that the blessing is spiritual. It's not just an ordinary thing. Somebody who doesn't have a spiritual capacity, a spiritual authority, will not be able to deliver a blessing. But somebody who has a spiritual capacity, a spiritual authority, can be able to deliver the blessing. The blessing is spiritual, but it works out on the things around a person, the circumstances, the conditions around an individual. The third point I want to make about the blessing is this. The blessing is carried in words or is conveyed by words. The words may be oral, spoken, or they may be written down. But the, it takes words to convey the blessing. Nobody can be blessed without a communication. Blessing is conveyed by a, a, a communication, words. The words may be written, the words may not be written. For instance, there is no government that can give a rule or a legislation without speaking it, without declaring it. That is why the word declaration, pronunciation are very, very important because the, word, the blessing must be pronounced. The blessing must be declared. And that is also for you to pay attention to what you're saying because you may be releasing the blessing with your word or withholding the blessing by what you say. Another point we must take note of is this. 
the blessing influences a person's life, even determines the cost of the person's life. There are people you look at what they do, you can't really equate why is this person getting so much of these good things in life. Sometimes you it, it doesn't measure with the effort. It is because uh, there is a blessing. A blessing influences a person's life, even determining the person's destiny. The blessing can move somebody from obscurity into the into the limelight. The blessing is a positive influence on a person's life. It is something that can change a destiny. The blessed, the blessed, their life takes a different tone. For instance, let's look at somebody who was called Jabez. He was called Jabez because he was delivered in pain. The mother said, I bore him in pain. And the mother called him Jabez. That, the, the name means pain, sorrow. But this man called Jabez, according to what is recorded in the Bible, in 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9, the Bible says that he called on God, the God of Jacob, and said that you will bless me indeed. And the Bible recorded that God granted him his, his request. And this person became an honorable person, more honorable than his cousins, than his brothers, than his members of his family in his generation. That is how the blessing can turn somebody's life around, from bitterness to sweet, from sorrow to honor. That is how the blessing can influence somebody's life. There, there, is a, there are people who can testify to you that their life changed when somebody spoke over them, when somebody spoke into their life, when somebody addressed their situation. That is how powerful the blessing is. The blessing influences a life. It can determine how somebody's life will be. The person can determine that somebody will live long or determine that somebody could be lifted, could be the head in any place. That is the power of the blessing. Another point I want to make on, about the blessing is that the, on the flip side of the blessing, the opposite of the blessing is curse. And curse works just like the blessing works. The only difference is that while the blessing makes somebody prosper, while the blessing lifts somebody up, while the blessing makes somebody's life to be good, cause makes somebody to have sorrow, to have pain, to have losses, to have defeat. Cause works in the opposite direction as the blessing works in the positive direction. The blessing can help you, but the cause, causing, destroys people's life. That's a stark difference between the blessing and cursing. So I want you to pay attention to what is actually happening in your life. Are you in the blessing or are you in curse? Curses can be broken. Blessings can be initiated. It's all there. Another thing I want you to note is that blessings can last for generations. Blessings can last for generations. If the foundation is not broken, if the conditions are met, blessings last for generations. In Exodus chapter 20, God spoke to the children of Israel and said that he's a God that treats thousands of generations with mercy. Thousands of generations. So, a blessing that is declared today could perpetuate in your children's life, in your children's children's life. For generations after generation after generation, the blessing is still potent. Uh, we have said it over and over that the blessing can last, gener can last for years, decades, centuries. The, the blessing of Abraham is a typical example because wherever you see Jews today, you can still see the blessing working in their lives. You can still see 
Some people claim that <laughs> the Jews are ruling the whole world. They are governing uh, many global corporations. When you look at it, it can still be traced to a single fact that they are in the descendant of Abraham and they are receiving the blessing. So you see that the blessing can last for thousands of generations, thousands of years. It is something you can pay attention to. On the other side, curses can also last. But I thank God that there is a solution for breaking curses. If there are causes that have been there, they can be broken. You don't have to be afraid of it. But one thing you can know is that if we maintain the basis of the of blessing, we can perpetuate the blessing. And if there is any cause that has lasted for generations, they can be broken also. Another point I want to make about a blessing is that blessings come from authority. Blessings come from authority, they flow through a generation, and they are controlled by contact points. Let me take them one by one. The Bible says in Hebrews that the lesser is blessed by the greater. Commonly today, you find people talking anyhow, you even find small children telling elderly people, telling grown-ups, I bless you. I bless you. <laughs> sometimes it's amusing. Sometimes it's pathetic. It's simply because they don't know what the blessing is and they don't know how the blessing flows. The blessing flows from a greater authority. And since the blessing is a spiritual thing, then it means the person must have a spiritual authority, a spiritual power to, con to, to execute. Now, when, the, when a higher authority declares a blessing, the blessing flows. But there must be a relationship through which the blessing can pass through. So there must, there's a need to create a relationship. Whether it's a father-son, a father-child relationship, or pastor-member uh, relationship, or prophet, prophet <laughs> Uh, follower relationship, teacher student relationship. That relationship is a channel through which the blessing will flow. Then there will be a contact point. A contact point could be anything you decide to be a point on which you release your faith and receive the blessing. It could be the point of service, it could be a point of seed sowing, it could be a point of prayer. It could be a, a, a contact. You, de you decide a contact, but that contact is one of the things that controls the flow of the blessing. Let's take, for an instance, the time that Isaac wanted to bless his son, the son that will inherit in whose generation that Jesus will be born. He, he asked Esau, the firstborn, to bring him venison. A lot of things have been said about this case of Esau and Jacob. But I want to stand where the Bible say, stands. And there are a lot of things the Bible says. One is that Esau appears to be rebellious. That's the first thing you note. Because he didn't care what the mother thought about whoever he marries. And that is one thing that made Rebecca to stand against his son, her son Esau. Another thing you will note is that the Bible says that Esau was immoral. Why? Because he despised his birthright and sold it for a plate of food, a bowl of porridge. That is something striking. When people despise the blessing, when people despise birthright, they might want to get the blessing at a time, but they might not have it. It might be, it may, they may have sold it. So we need to understand. Then another thing I, I, I sense in my spirit is that Isaac required a venison to activate the spirit to release the blessing because Esau was not doing what he was he should be doing when you are 
in right standing with your next authority. They don't need venison to release the blessing because you have already activated it. I don't know where you are, but watch how you attend to your spiritual authority. Whether it's your parents or whether it's your pastor or whether it's your teacher, pay attention how you relate to them. Because if you're serving diligently, if you do what you should do, when they release the blessing, it comes naturally. They wouldn't be asking you to activate it by sowing seed or to activate it by bringing a venison. Because at the material time when Esau was asked to bring a venison, he went out and before he could come back, it was already gone. But I want to encourage you, be in the right spirit. Don't be a rebellious person. Pay attention to what is what your next authority is saying so that when it is time to release it, they release it freely without making demand for a sacrifice or anything. It is important we learn this secret that keeping in right spiritual state makes you ready to seize the blessing when the blessing is released. It is important we pay attention. Once again, I want to tell you something. The blessing can determine the course of your life. When you receive the blessing of God, enemies can come around. People can attack you, but the blessing can preserve you. The blessing can protect you. The blessing can lift you up. Actually, the thing that lifts people up in life is the blessing. It is only the blessing of God that raises people, that makes people rise in authority, to become heads. Any other thing anybody, anyone wants to rise to power will only lead to sorrow. If the blessing of God is not in need, the person will not enjoy it. It will come to nothing, practically nothing. But when people are lifted by the blessing, the Bible says the blessing of the Lord makes rich and he adds no sorrow to it. The blessing can change the course of your life. If you've been struggling in your life, it is time to seek the blessing. It is time to get the blessing because the blessing will turn your life around. It will, it will give you joy instead of sorrow, instead of the spirit of heaviness. The blessing can break and dispel every cause. The blessing can make your life different. And I want to encourage you, be like Jacob. Pursue the blessing and get the blessing. God is not stingy to keep the blessing from you. He's willing and he's even done everything necessary for you to receive the blessing. So the blessing is now available. And I encourage you, seek God, seek his blessing, and your life will be totally different. Thank you for listening. Mm -hmm.